Welcome back to the Buddy North podcast. I'm Simon Ward, your host, and today we have a social media and content ninja. That is Sonia Estevilo. Welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> you okay? I'm doing fantastic. How about you? Very good. I'm uh, I'm good. What we're going to talk about today is agents and publishers, um, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. But before we get on to that, just give us a little summary of uh, your writing journey. So I've been writing my whole life, like many people, like many aspiring authors. Some started late in life. I remember having a book, a notebook and pen er everywhere I went ever since I was in second grade. And I remember, I'll never forget, my second grade teacher told me, um, you're going to be a writer someday. Oh, and uh, and I thought to myself at second grade, um, no, I'm going to be a doctor or something else. I mean, who wants to be a writer? And I never forgot that. That how did this how did this teacher know? Because it was a part of this. She was saying this in a, in response to a writing exercise we had to do, and I came up with the story and she just thought that I was going to be a writer someday. And I just I was like, how did she know? And Fast forward, I'm still writing. Um, I have blogs. I've written news articles, uh, marketing copy, both paid and organic copy. I'm also a, a social media content strategist, marketing strategist, brand strategist. So I, by day, I think I think you need to help me. <laughs> well, I do know how to sell products, and I do know how to market myself. I do know how to promote. Um, products, people, individuals, a, a brand. I'm a brand strategist. I have a master's degree in television, radio, and film. In addition to 22 certifications, I have 22 certifications in every social media platform you can possibly think of. Um, Facebook, Blueprint, Meta, Creative. You're, uh, you're busy. You're a busy lady, aren't you? <laughs> you know, and you would think that, and I have over 76,000, I probably, the most recent count is off by about 10 or 15,000. So I believe I, I'm closer to 80,000 followers now. And you would think, I remember seeing a, a, somebody tweet, if I could only get to 2,000 followers, it was something low. Oh, I, I would, and the person really thought they were going to get a book deal out of it if if they just if bubble publishers to see that i have two thousand followers on twitter um i'll get a book deal and i have almost thirty thousand followers and i don't have a book deal um so it doesn't that is a big misnomer yes publishers and agents want you to have followers but i've never gotten special treatment simon for my follower base. I have never gotten special treatment for being BIPOC. Um, you know, the, there's a big BIPOC movement. Oh, if, if you're white, then forget it. That's not true. If you're any color, it's hard. Um, it, it, and it doesn't matter. You would think, wow, you're really, I mean, I can't tell you how many times people think that they're, I'm really going to get a book deal because I have all these followers. And that's just not the case and my my manuscripts i've been told is very very commercial they're like this is like a csi um have you seen criminal minds this is this reminds me of criminal minds or this reminds me of the girl with the dragon tattoo one of my manuscripts are is like the girl with the dragon tattoo it's a very feminist female serial killer theme they're like oh man this is definitely going to get picked up i mean i i've had traditional publisher traditionally published book authors say there is no way this book cannot get picked up they're like this is this is more commercial than mine and mine was already picked up there's no way this cannot be picked up and guess what simon um four books later four books on submission and um 150 publisher rejections uh a, a, an agent that i had for five years and we amicably amicably parted ways i am still not published yet i think the uh i think a big message for all budding authors out there is getting an agent is is not always the uh the the holy grail as it were because no, bad like um 
like the song there's good and bad in everyone and isn't that <laughs> that's well, good and bad everywhere. exactly simon and you know what's interesting is that i found out after the fact that the agent had a kind of a bad reputation and you know shame on me for not seeing that before and I, I i consider myself a content ninja and i didn't because i wasn't looking at the time that i was represented i wasn't googling them to see if they were on absolute right i don't know if you know the 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 thread there's two threads that every author should aspiring author should look at absolute right and um agent beware or writers beware absolute right and uh right to beware. beware so victoria strauss is a veteran in this industry and she does absolute right and or i'm sorry she does writers beware and she knew of the agent that represented me and knew of the bad book deals and one thing i could say is like if an agent has a bad reputation, the chances of editorial acquisition teams taking their emails and their queries and their pitches seriously is very low. So even if Simon Ward has a very good manuscript and it's ah, really, really yes, good, yes. <laughs> like your book is super, super marketable and good, the agent, um, that with the bad reputation is not going to take Simon seriously because of the agencies as a whole perception. Yeah. Perception. So it's, it, it is guilt by association. You don't have to have murdered the person. There's some States in Cal in, in the United States that just by association of somebody being, having killed somebody, you could actually get life from prison because you were in the car. So, yeah. It is the same concept, and I didn't know this until later. So, so out of the 150 rejections, could one of them have said yes if I was represented by Writer's House, if I was represented by um, Donald Moss or somebody huge? Yeah. To be honest, I think I think somebody would have said yes. It's possible. The uh, absolute right. Uh, and uh, writers beware where do we find those are they on twitter or they're online online yeah. so absolute writer absolute ab right absolute right uh, mm -hmm. dot com yeah, yeah. and uh, writers beware dot com so there was really a lot of threads about this agent on absolute right they were very negative and it was like somebody plucked out the words out of my head and wrote it down. I didn't even know this person. A lot of these people that write on Absolute Right are anonymous. I couldn't believe it. I go, this is what happened to me with this agent. And then this person said, you know, the person, the agent was very condescending, very rude. Um, on top of that, um, there were errors in the pitch letter sent to publishers, um, like grammatical errors, genre errors. Um, in my oh, particular, very good at all then. Did you did you have a meeting with the agent, or is it all just online stuff? So some agencies will allow you to. Some agents will actually do face to face and a lot of agents do by phone by cell phone you're you know if you especially if you sell or if you're getting a deal um you know this person that i i read uh, uh, the negative review from an anonymous person i don't even know they said that they are now with a really good agent and they ate that really good agent got them a, a big five book deal and there was a huge difference in communication between the agency that repped me and them and the new and that her, their new agent their new agent gave them her their cell they're on text message base they're yeah. very communicative it's a so, huge difference yeah so i think it it would 
it, with that in mind, it would be a big red flag if uh, when you have a meeting with them, they're not sharing their details. Ever. For me, That's for the me, problem we, that I had with this agent. As a matter of fact, out of the 150, I got I to gotta tell you, Simon, if you get a rejection from Random House, if you get a rejection from Putnam, if you get a rejection from... Um, from one of the Amazon imprints like late, like uh, Thomas and Mercer and whatnot. Thomas and Mercer is actually an agency from a, a publisher imprint from um, Amazon, and you cannot go through them without an agent. So they do uh, not take like that. the UK ones are the same. They want you to have an agent before you can uh, be represented. Right. So, long story short, I was Simon. If Simon gets rejected, it is my responsibility as the agent to tell Simon you when you ask me, can you can you tell me, um, Sonia, why why did um, Thomas and Mercer reject us? Um, imagine somebody saying no. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so well, basically, the on your team. Agent did. On your team then are they? The, the whole point of an agent is to have someone on your side, on your team. Right. They're it's supposed to tell you. you everything, Simon. They're supposed to tell you, Simon. You know, they they um they thought that your your manuscript was too literary, um for their imprints, um or they 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 thought that there was too many characters, and then. And then we 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 should pause and say, okay, well, what is our new, new strategy? Do you think we, you could cut out some characters because they complained about too many characters? And then Simon, the author, could be like, yeah, let's. I, I could see if I can maybe finesse it, but if we've reached a point where we've re revised it like a hundred twenty fifty times, you know, at that at there's there reaches a point where you're like, okay there's not much we can do. I, 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 we understand what the rejection, what the, why they they rejected you, but there's not much more we can do with this manuscript. But if we feel that there is something you could do, then you pause, you revise it yeah. based on the notes of the publishers and why they rejected you. And then we, then we take another round at another pass at new a new list of publishers because yeah. there are hundreds and hundreds of publishers under the five big five imprint big five publishers so that's the way you're supposed to do it and in my case i never got and i asked them over and over again can you please share what the reject why they rejected us why they rejected all my four manuscripts they refused to share the reason why the publish the the agent did yeah. didn't didn't send me the, any of the documents, so to me that was a huge red flag. And when I reached out to Victoria Strauss and I told her what happened from Writers Beware, she knew about this agency, knew about their unprofessionalism, knew about their bad book deals, and they told me, yeah, that is, that is not normal. I just wanted to tell you as a professional, what happened to you is not the way you're supposed to be treated. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sonia, I've got to ask, um, you were with them for five years. Why were you with them for that long? If they're not giving you the support? You know, good question. I think that, um, I hung on like um, like some people, you know, I'm a true crime buff and I can't tell you how many um, stories I've seen where the spouse is in a bad relationship and they don't leave until someone dies <laughs> and um, someone is murdered and they're like, oh my, and you're almost wanting to pull your hair out because you're like, this person did this to them at this day and then the cops were called and then the person was arrested and then the person came, you know, did all these things and they still took them back. Why didn't they leave? Now they're dead. Why didn't they leave? Um, so uh, now this is, is this a case of uh, you becoming a character in your own book? Yeah. It, pretty much. It was a case of what it, fiction, yeah? it was a case of, to be honest, Simon, it was a case of insecurity in the sense of 
Well, um, being married is better than not being married. And that's just not the case. Like, well, I don't want to be single. I don't want to be out there single again. I have to start all over again with the dating apps. I have to, I have to put myself out there and put a profile up there. I don't even want to do that, you know, and I got just, I'll just, I'm comfortable, you know, and in, as an aspiring author, there's always this fear of, oh, well, if I, I I'd, I'd rather have an agent than not have an agent at all. Even if the person is, was abuse, the person was actually, um, wasn't physically abusive, obviously, but the person yeah, was yeah, yeah. manipulative, manipulative, gaslighting. And it's funny because the person who wrote the anonymous review on absolute right also complained that this agent was very manipulative and did a lot of gaslighting. So my whole point is not every agent is bad like that, yeah. but it, um, I will say that I wouldn't say bad. They got, they had good, they did, they did sell to big five, but most of their public, most of their book deals, this is a red flag, Simon. Most of their book deals were book deals that the, that the, that Simon could have gotten on his own. Yeah. So in other words, there are tons of, not a lot, but there are some publishers that take unsolicited manuscripts and a lot of these book deals that this agent was getting were from publishers that were already that you don't need you don't even you don't need an agent for it. Yeah. Did you uh, did you get published with some of those? Yeah. I did not. You did not. What did you do with you? Did you self publish in the end? No. So long story short, the reason why I stayed with them was because I guess I was worried that well an agent is better than no agent but now hindsight i realize i feel so much more free not having the agent because i've actually to be honest since we parted ways i have had more full requests from publishers in, in a, like a month's time doing it by myself so uh, so you're getting the reaction now from the publishers I yeah, think, um, I have an experience with a uh, with a publisher. Um, Happened. <clears throat> I I submitted and um, it was a great delight for me that they came back and they wanted to represent me. And uh, we set up a phone call and before they they said they wanted to give me a publishing contract. And um, then I received the publishing contract the day before the mm -hmm. telephone conversation. Mm -hmm. Um. And in that publishing contract, they were they were asking for money. Oh, it was a it was a vanity press. It was a pay to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the, I actually uh, set up an interview with one somebody like that too. One one follower on TikTok said, "You know what? I'm going through such and such company. Um, I really highly recommend." And then I I queried them. They set up an it. Uh, a deal with me um they met up with me and um come to find out they are very well known vanity press and everybody in the industry knows them the, the vanity press then yeah it's a vanity press yeah the ones that i submitted on my own are do not take money and um should not take money from you so well, in, in this one, let me uh, let me just give you the uh, the detail to this. Sure. Um, the the price they gave me um much um five thousand seven hundred dollars. That's that's no, you know what they gave me. They they you know what they told me. This is just dude Simon. This is just for digital. This was your brace yourself. This was just to take Simon's book and put it on a digital platform. That's not even to print out your book, right? I can do that myself. $20,000. If you've got the money, then I suppose it's okay. But um, <laughs> for me, I asked the question, well, this was this was for a small project of mine. It's a children's mm -hmm. book, just 900 words. Yeah. Um, I said, well, would I that be... $5,000, how are you worried? <laughs> $5,000. I, I would that be the same price for a 60,000 word novel? And they said it's fixed pricing. So 
60,000 word novel is 5,700, but 1,900 word ch children's book. That just doesn't make any sense. Does... When, I had the when I had the call, the, um, the other person on the call didn't show their face, even though it was a video call. Um, so that was a, a fl another red flag as well. I like to see people's face if I'm dealing with people. And that's it. We have got this show that's going out on a podcast. But um, I like to see people's face. I like to see who I'm talking to. It's um, it's a whole different world, isn't it? We've, I do. Um, I like that too. <clears throat> all the people that promote, um, want to promote you on Instagram and that sort of thing. We have lots of contact from people. And um, a lot of those people have got very little qualifications and and um, it's selling people on the hope of, uh, of big sales and that sort of, it's a difficult yeah, one. A lot of, I agree there. You got to be very careful because I get a lot of digital marketers that approach me and just simply because no, I don't have a million followers, but you know, 70, 80,000 followers is still quite a lot for an average account. So, I mean, I get a lot of people constantly hitting me up and asking me where my book is and everything else. Um, it was interesting. I actually even got one legitimate um, newspaper, uh, digital newspaper. I think they were affiliated. I'm not going to say the LA Times, but they were affiliated one, with one of the bigger newspapers. And they asked me, where was my book? I, they wanted to write a whole article about me. And that's the thing. It's like, um, if these publishers would give me a chance... And get and, and publish my book. I already have people that want to read it, yeah. Um, and and do pre and do press releases for me and everything else like that. Right. But with um with with how you've had such a torture there, I think obviously you've got books now out for publisher review, right? Officially published. Um, small presses. My, yeah. Yeah. From my point of view, from my point of view, I would have just taken that and independently published by now you're 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 absolutely right about that there's a lot of people that would not have suffered as long as i have um it, you know a lot of people they're like I, you've got a lot of patience because you know yeah what why stay in a relationship where the person is neglecting you for five years and yeah. and, and maybe they're guilt by association they're 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 not so good relationships with acquisition editors because let's put it this way i mean doesn't that make sense to you that a, a literary agent with good relationships with acquisition editors are probably going to get bumped up there it's a psychological thing their books that they present this other book might be trash compared to simon's book yeah. but because this other person is associated with a big name literary agent yeah. i can't see how that does not sway their decision well when i think we see we see a lot of uh, traditionally published books and we read traditionally published books and um the quality is not that great not it is not mm. good at all i think it all has to do with they were lucky to have gotten someone who is buddy buddy with the editorial team yeah. and 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 a lot of people don't talk about that they say oh no and i've heard i've heard this in fa in facebook groups f that are that for authors and aspiring authors they go no 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 wait a minute one person was like oh i used to work with for, for a publishing company and that's not necessarily true we read they they typically read all books or all queries not not no they don't um <laughs> based on the, you know the anonymous letter that i the anonymous bad review that i talked about in the anonymous bad review she confessed she said i actually spoke with legitimate industry pros other agents and other editorial teams that confessed that they do not take this particular agency seriously. So when they see, when, so when they see um, the agent's name pop up in their inbox, they ignore it. They don't even read it. Yeah. So, so I think, so I think the, the, message, the message that we'll leave people with is um, that 
to get an agent is a good thing but making yeah. sure that the the relationship with that agent and the feedback you're getting from that agent is right it's uh, as you say with the marriage if um if everything looks good and then there's big red flags every day and um so one partner's disappearing for hours and end with no yeah. explanation yeah you wouldn't stay in that relationship you wouldn't follow right. the marriage simon a hundred percent you what what you asked me why did you stay so long bottom line if i were to talk to myself five years ago i would have given it one year or two years max and i would have said okay that's it um yeah. you you have to gauge um based on results yeah. is the agent giving you results but more importantly beyond the results do they have a good reputation with the, these publishers? Do they have legitimate repu a good reputation? And I think that that's I'm, I'm I'm thinking maybe would this work? The we could speak to email publishers and ask them if they could recommend agents. Would they do that? I think we should even speak to a publisher. I would love to even spot speak to an editorial. Um, acquisitions person and just say hey um be honest with us doesn't doesn't it does it or does it not sway your opinion if if the team if if somebody has a good contact good relationship with you and not even necessarily a good or bad re reputation but do they have a do you have a better relationship with certain agents than you do with others i, I think they would always I think they would um, they would probably say no to that. But the reality, you and I both know that the reality yes. is different. I it's think asking the, asking the question of, I'm looking to get an agent, have you got any recommendations? Yeah. That would be a different question. I'd, but, like, I'd like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe we get a direct answer to that or not, I don't know. Maybe I need to... Uh, get a publishing house on here on the channel and ask them that and I'm not saying, I, I, like i said i'm not i'm not i'm not saying negative something negative about every agent that's out there i mean i think that there are some i i, I actually worked with literary agencies and tv studios green lighting screenplays and manuscripts so i've done that myself because i've been on the other end um i took pitches at the LA Writer Conference. I work with Brian Clems. He used to be a former columnist and published uh, columnist and editor at Writer's Digest. Um, and I worked as an editor for a writing day workshop. It's a national hub that manages all these conferences, both, na both in person and nationwide. So I've worked on that end of things. Um, so I have I have been on the end and I've actually been asked numerous times, okay, will you be an agent for our agency? And I turned it down yeah. um, because uh, I learned by working with um, at literary agencies that it was a lot of work and most, and you don't get paid um, an hourly rate. You are paid by commission only. You are paid yeah. by that's books. A tough, that's a tough gig. That's a tough gig, isn't it? So um, I so can do it. Yeah, Sonia, I think that's uh, that's been excellent, and I think the information that you've shared is going to be a big help to a lot of our listeners, and yeah, a lot of our viewers. So uh, thank you very much for that. We will get you back on the show when your book is published and you have a publisher. Confirmed. So bottom line is, yeah. if you, I think that my message is, you just um, no agent is sometimes better than having one. Yeah, and I think. I think my advice would be if if you're having problems getting through to publishers and getting through to agents, self-publish, put your book out there. I agree and, with that. And, and see where you go with that. But um, right then, we're going to leave that there for now. And uh, so we'll speak to you again. But uh, I'll be in touch and uh, we'll definitely uh, talk. Nice one. Thank you, Sonia. Great. <laughs> Thank Thanks you for coming on. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.